This video is to show an example of using QuantaSuite 2.0 to compare a plastic Poland Springs water bottle to a metal thermos. Um, since we didn't get to do this in detail in class yesterday, I wanted to show you the complete build of these two objects and how to compare them in Quantus. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. And um, I've already logged into Qantas. I'm going to go into the same um, project that I set up in class yesterday, but I'll make a new one so you can see this whole thing from start to finish. So I click the folder that I want to add the new project in. I select New Project. I'm going to add a product project, the first option. I'm going to call this new project Complete um, Water Bottle Example. In my description box, I'm going to go into the PowerPoint that I was showing, where I'm going to copy and paste the text of my goal and scope into the description box in Qantas. And again, this is just for my own record keeping. It doesn't affect how Qantas does any of the calculations, but it's just good so that if anybody else or you at a later date is going back to review the project um, that you conducted and you want to see what all of your assumptions were, your functional unit, things like that, it's all in one place. I'm also going to grab the goal and scope. Whoops. And change that typo. Go back to Qantas, paste that in. And where's my typo? 365 days in a year. Cool. Okay. Um, again, this indicator tags you don't need to worry about. So it's just the description where you enter the project name and the description of the project. The next is to click design. Over on the left, you're going to click the green plus sign to add a new um, part or final. I'm, it doesn't matter for the purposes of what we're doing here. It's easier, I think, just to do final for everything because I'm looking at the final full assembly of the water bottle compared to the final full assembly of um, the metal bottle. So my first one is going to be the PET plastic bottle. I'm going to also add another final metal bottle. I'm going to go back and select the PET plastic bottle, and it's prompting me to enter information about the properties. Um, again, I can click this description path. Uh, tab and again enter sort of all of the information about the assumptions that I'm making related to this plastic bottle um, which for my class example I didn't go into all of the assumptions that I'm making but things like where the bottling plant is um, where the what the packaging is what I'm considering what I'm not considering all of this information I would include here and do the exact same thing for my metal bottle assumptions limitations and boundaries in my description box here um, I'm not going to do that now in looking at time all right so I'm going to go to properties of my functional I'm going to start with my functional unit and can go back to my little cheat sheet here. My functional unit. I'll have to find it and change this to 365. Okay. My system multiplier again, this is um, because I'm not just comparing one plastic bottle to one metal bottle, but to achieve the one year's worth of water consumption via my metal bottle, I only need one bottle. Um, I'm, 
I can wash it many, many times and get the full number of uses out of it. So for metal bottle, which is what I'm in right now, my system multiplier is one. I'm just copy this. Um, I'm going to do the same thing in my PT bottle to remind me what my functional unit is. However, in this case, my functional unit in order to achieve 2.2 liters of water consumption per day, all coming from my PET plastic bottle. I go back and double check this, but I believe I need, uh, let's see, 1,606 plastic bottles, which is what my system multiplier is going to be. 1,606, because when I build out the whole process tree in Qantas, I'm only building it out for one bottle, and then I'm allowing the software to multiply that by 1,606, the number of bottles that I would use in one year. Okay, so the next is to click the schema tab. Now this is where we start building the process tree. So I'm gonna start with the PT bottle. Um, in this area, this is where I'm gonna build my process tree. You wanna make sure that the box is highlighted. You can see that right now it's not highlighted and therefore none of my um, tools up top are um, highlighted. If I click in, then they become, everything becomes editable. So I'm gonna add a new element. New element is essentially the exact same thing as one of the boxes in the process tree. We're basically gonna create this exact same structure in more detail uh, in Qantas. So first thing first, add a new element. This new element, and again, I wanna be very specific about naming this and not just saying plastic bottle body because what if I were to do a copy of this and compare it to a different type of plastic, I wanna make sure that I can distinguish between the two. So I'm gonna call this PET bottle body. The quantity over here, there's only one. I'm only modeling one bottle. Um, if I were modeling, say, a chair that had metal legs and I was entering an element called chair leg, I could model one chair leg and then multiply this, change the quantity to four to account for there being four um, chair legs in the full assembly of the table. But in this case, I just have one bottle, so I leave it as one. All right, I click the box again. I'm gonna add another new element. This is gonna be called PET cap. Again, there's only one. Press return to make sure that the text over here changes. Add a new element. Oops, I, yep. PET film label. Label. One label. And I'm gonna um, put the ink that I put separately in the process tree, but I'm gonna include the ink under this tab just to keep things sort of simplified. The next is I'm gonna bulk all of the transportation together, even though I know there's many different stages in the transportation potentially. I like to keep it all together because when, when the um, Qantas results display, it lumps it all together. So you can see just the impact due to transportation by itself. So this is again, PET. Bottle transport. Uh, I'm going to add a box for use. Even though I know there's nothing, um, there are no impacts due to the use, I don't have to plug it in, I don't have to wash it, I just use it and dump it. Um, but this is a good reminder just to get in the habit of setting up the full structure for the life cycle even if there's nothing that you put into it. And then finally, whoops, PEP bottle, end of life. I'm abbreviating with E-O-L, end of life. Okay, great, so now I have the basic structure of, um, of my setup, and when I get to the final results, these are the initial categories that will display um, but now I want to add all the various um, flows from raw materials through manufacturing and assembly for each one of these components within my system. So I click the arrow down. I make sure the PET bottle body box is highlighted, and then I press new element, and it nests it. If for some reason I mess that up, 
Let me get rid of this just to show you. Yes, I'm going to delete it. If for some reason I'm actually highlighted the major or the the, the overall box and I press new element, but I wanted it to be nested within the PET bottle, all I have to do is drag it and drop it into the right spot and then your problem is solved. So I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna change this new element to PET body RM, raw material, and press enter. Okay, you're gonna do the same thing, new element, PEP body processing. And again, I'm distinguishing raw material from processing from manufacturing. Raw material is what you are literally pulling out of the ground. Processing is converting that raw material into the usable material and manufacturing is, con manufacturing is converting that um, usable material into the form that you need for the component. So we need manufacturing. PET body manufacturing. Enter. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing for the cap. Um, new element. Oops, see, I messed up. So all I have to do is drag and drop it. Whoops, not quite. There we go. Highlight this new element, PET cap, RM, raw material, PET cap processing, plus PET cap manufacturing, And then same deal with this guy for my film label, PET label, RM. PET label processing. Label manufacturing. Cool. Um, transportation, I'm going to leave alone right now. Use, I don't need to add anything. And bottle end of life, um, I'm assuming that the entire assembly is going to be thrown out together. I'm not going to separate the cap from the label from the bottle, so I can model it as just one element um, within this without having to nest other elements within the end of life. All right, so now I've got my structure set up, um, and now what I have to start doing is adding uh, the information to describe what's actually happening at each one of these stages. So I'm going to first click into my PET bottle raw material. I'm gonna go over to categories. If it's not already selected and you've got, to, it looks like this, just click the category tab. You're gonna grab, you can arrow down from material inputs because I'm looking for the impacts due to a material's raw material, right? So I'm gonna look for plastics because my bottle is made of plastic. And again, this is just pointing to the right area of the database. So it is essentially the table of contents for the database so that when you go in and look for the environmental factor, that piece of um, uh, life cycle information relating to this particular material process, it's pointing at the right spot to go look for it. So I click plastics, I drag it, and I drop it in PET body raw material. All right. So the next step is to rename this because if I just leave everything saying plastics, I'm not going to be able to distinguish when I'm looking at my results the difference between the impact due to raw material versus material processing versus manufacturing. So I click this, go over to the right, and again, I'm just going to name it PET body RM. Okay. This time for the quantity, it's actually asking me for um, the weight of material that I'm 
looking to account for. So again, I'm only modeling one, bo uh, one bottle. So I look back at my notes here, and I see that one plastic bottle weighs 9.2 grams. So I'm going to go back here, change this to 9.2 grams. Okay, and you just want to make sure that the data was captured. Um, I'm going to do the, okay, so I'm going to leave that there. The next thing I want to do now is to go into the database and actually find the information that relates to the raw material of PET plastic. So I click this gray box, it says attach EF, attach the environmental factor, which is that data to this process tree that I have developed. And I click in, and the first thing I see is basically everything that is under plastics within the EcoInvent database that we have access to um, by way of Qantas. Um, but I specifically know the PET is a polymer, so this is a way of sort of filtering my results. I'm going to click polymer. I'm also going to click um, final products versus processing stages. Generally, um, final products are having to do with the actual material. Processing stages have to do more with the manufacturing process. That's not always the case. Sometimes things are sorted in a way that I would not have sorted them. Um, but because I'm pretty familiar with what's going on in the plastics part of this database, I'm going to click Final Products to narrow down my results. And basically, it's giving me a whole bunch of different options for different types of plastics. But I know I'm looking for PET plastic. Um, bottle grade, sometimes there are many options within one type of um, one resin type. I know we're dealing with bottles, so I'm going to pick the bottle grade one. Oops, I'm going to go back. Sorry. I clicked too quickly. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Polymers, final products. Here we go. Bottle grade. If I click it once, all right. So the information over on the right side, all these numbers, is basically giving me the actual value for human health, ecosystem quality, climate change, resources, water withdrawal, and water turbine. Um, however, I am looking down here because this is going to describe to me where the data came from, what the data is um, including, and what it's not including in most cases. some data in the database is much better than others. Some of it's very general and sort of states that. And others, if you read in the description, there's very um, detailed information about where the data came from and what's considered, what's not considered. So if I read this in the definition, it says data right here, data are based on the average unit process for the eco profiles of the European plastics industry. So that's basically saying where it's coming from, what is considered average data for the production of bottle grade PET out of um, ethanol glycol, PTA, and amorphous PET. The data include material and energy output, waste, as well as air water emissions, um, missing some parameters to water, transport, and infrastructure are estimated. So it's basically telling me that not only is this dealing with um, the raw materials, but it's also dealing with the processing. It's converting these raw materials to my PET plastic. So sometimes you'll find that this, um, these data points will sum up many of the nodes in your process tree under one data point. And in other cases, you'll have to go find each one of the stages of the life cycle independently. So to say, yes, I want this one, I double click, which is what I did before. Yes, I know. Um, and now I can see this gray text is appearing below that's saying um, that it is captured the EcoInvent data set. And um, so that's good. Um, so because this encompasses the processing, I actually don't need this box. So I'm going to change the name of this to add processing, so I remember. Also this. And I'm going to remove this box. Yep. All right, so now I need my body manufacturing process. Again, I go over to plastics. I drag and I drop 
plastics. I'm going to change the name to PET body wool molding because that is the process being involved. Um, quantity, I am only accounting for the environmental impacts attributed to 9.2 grams of plastic being blow molded. So I'm going to change it to 9.2 and make sure my units are grams. This is where a lot of errors happen. You forget to put the correct units or converting and um, that's why your results will look all wacky. I click the gray box EF, go into the plastics part of the database. Again, I'm going to go for polymers, and this time I'm going to select material. Uh, sorry, processing stages. And you see the first option, blow molding. And I'm going to double click to accept that. Great. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing with the cap. And because it's the same material, I know that I'm not going to need that processing stage because it's covered by the raw material and processing data point. Same thing with PET label, it's the same material. Thank you, I'm gonna delete that. Yep, great, okay. So, I go to PET cap raw material, rename it to include processing. Grab plastics, drag and drop, rename it. My quantity, go look at my cheat sheet, 0.01 grams. Oh, nope, that's the label. Cap, 0.1 grams. 0.1 grams. Okay. All right. I'm going to click EF. Again, I'm looking for PET. All right, grab and drop plastics, rename. Again, I've got 0.1 grams of PET that in this, uh, this time, actually it's, I'm gonna change this to injection molding, so remember. All right, I just realized that this is still wrong. Molding, there. Click EF, again, polymers, processing stages, and now I'm looking for injection molding, and there it is. Double click, cool. The last part, the last component I have to deal with is my raw material. Again, plastics. Rename it. My quantity is 0 0.01 grams. Polymers, final products. Plastics. Rename it. So this time, um, instead of wool molding or injection molding, I have to create film. That's the material for my manufacturing process. Again, I've got 0 0.01 grams of that. Okay. And go to EF, polymer, processing stages, extrusion, plastic film. Great. Okay, so now I've got all of my components dealt with here. Now I have to deal with my bottle transportation. So, if I go back to my cheat sheet here, I've got all the calculations done here. Um, 
I would strongly encourage you to copy and paste this information and add it in the description of your transportation element. Um, this is where 90% of the mistakes are made, where units didn't convert correctly or you forgot to account for, say, the weight of the water in this circumstance. And if you've got it all typed out here, I can really quickly sort of go in and check to make sure that you did your math right. Um, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. And what I'm really looking for is the payload distance. So again, that's not just looking for the distance that this thing has to go on a truck or a plane or a freight ship, depending on the mode of transportation, but the weight of it multiplied by the distance that it's got to travel. Um, so if you look here, I'm accounting for both the weight of the water um, and the weight of the bottle assembly, all those different components put together. And also um, looking at the distribution between Portland, Maine bottling facility, which is the bottling facility that I'm assuming this is coming from, which happens to be 524.65 kilometers away from New York City. I figured out that using Google Maps, not very difficult. So then I'm multiplying the distance by the um, weight of my bottle assembly plus the water, which I've converted to kilograms to get my kilograms by kilometer um, payload distance. So my number is seven, uh, sorry, 276.32 kilogram kilometers. So before I forget that, what did I say? Um, oh, oops, first we gotta go. So now we're getting out of the material inputs and we're actually looking for transportation inputs, which is a different tab under your categories. Um, this is, again, they tried to divvy it up in different ways. They're all basically the same information, so it's, uh, but you can use operation freight because that's what we're talking about specifically. Between incoming and outgoing operation freight, again, it's all the same stuff. I don't know why they subcategorize this stuff, but you can just drag operation freight and throw it into there. Again, this is my PEP bottle. Transport and it's taking a truck. Okay. Um, what was my quantity? I already forgot it. Go back and look. Two seven six point three two. Two seven six point three two, and I'm going to change my unit to kilograms, kilometers instead of tons per meter or per kilometer, okay? And I'm gonna go down to EF. Great, so I know it's taking a truck, so I'm gonna click road. Um, this operation versus full life cycle, um, please pick the full life cycle version instead of just the operation, because the full life cycle takes into account uh, the infrastructure and the impact on things outside of just the truck. So driving down the roads, the maintenance of the trucks, things like that is included in the life cycle. Um, the operation is just the impacts of the truck driving down the street. Okay, so I click full life cycle and um, again, because this is a European, European software, you'll see some terminology that you may not be familiar with, like the word lorry, which actually means um, a truck like a coach is a bus. Um, so we're looking for a lorry, and there's a bunch of different options here. And I'm gonna also click freight just to narrow that down a little bit. Um, and then you will see lots of different options here. What I would recommend is being consistent. So if you're gonna, um, I usually pick like uh, the fleet average, um, 20 to 28 ton truck. But again, it depends on uh, if you can find specifically the size of truck that they're using, then I would go with that. But for um, for this purpose, I'm just gonna pick this one truck. This is just kind of a fleet average for a large truck. Um, so I'm gonna double click. And you can see down here, the inventory refers to the entire transport lifecycle for road infrastructure, expenditures and environmental, 
um, interventions due to construction, renewal, and disposal of roads have been allocated based on the gross ton kilometer performance. Um, so it's basically just saying it's again looking at everything uh, having to do with both land land use, road infrastructure, vehicle performance, and maintenance stuff like that. So double click. Great. All right. Again, I got nothing for PT use. Um, the last thing we got to deal with here is my end of life. So I go back to my categories. I'm going to scroll around looking for end of life. Okay. Again, they've got product versus packaging. It's basically the same stuff. So just click product. Oops. And um, for some reason, they've got wastewater recycling and other emissions. They don't have just like general solid waste. Um, again, you can pick any of these because it's all going to take you to the same area of the, the database regardless. So I'm just going to grab recycling. They just call it recycling. Um, it's not necessarily just recycling because I'm going to rename it anyways. And this is going to be called PET bottle incineration. Again, in my assumptions, I assumed that um, either I'm a bad person or my um, local area doesn't have this particular type of plastic recycling. So um, as my worst case scenario, I'm assuming incineration. And now I've got um, the weight of just the bottle, which is 9.3 grams per cap, plus the label, plus the bottle body. Um, that is going into the landfill, or sorry, into the incineration. Okay, I click EF, and now I have lots of options here. And I'm looking for chemicals and plastics, and I'm looking for incineration. And let's see if I can find it. Here we go. Disposal of PET plastic to multiple uh, municipal incineration. So I don't know. Like that. Great. All right. So now I have my complete process tree with all of my life cycle inventory established. The next thing I'm going to do is click analysis. And if I click analysis and get any error messages, it means that I messed something up and I have to go find it. But it will tell you what to look for. I'm going to click analysis and oops, it's because look over here. If you've got nothing, it says metal bottle, which I haven't put any information in yet for. Um, just click PET plastic, and now I've got the right thing. All right, so I can see the PET bottle, the end of life, the PET bottle transportation, the PET cap, which is teeny tiny down at the bottom, and the film label, which is even teenier and tinier down at the bottom. Okay, so great. Now I'm going to go back to design and go to metal bottle and build the same thing but for my metal bottle. So I'm gonna do this really quick. Create a new element. And go back and look first at my cheat sheet here. So I basically have the stainless steel bottle body and my plastic polypropylene cap. All right, so this is going to be steel body. Bottle body. I've got one. Oops. Add another element. Steel bottle. Gosh, really am having trouble spelling today. So those are my two components. I'm going to add my uh, steel bottle transportation. I'm going to add my steel bottle use. Right now I've got washing that we have to deal with. And finally, my steel bottle, end of life. Great. Okay, so I'm going to go back up into my steel bottle body. I'm going to go back up to material inputs. Now I'm looking for a metal. I'm going to drag and drop that. 
rename. Okay, I'm going to go to my cheat sheet. I've got 211.92 grams. Click E, uh, oops, you know what I just realized? I forgot to add my new element within this thing. Not to worry, I can just drag and drop that right in there and rename this. Oops. Ugh, clicking too many times, okay. So now I'm going to look for the mining of, if I go back and look at my cheat sheet, the mining, the raw material, I've got iron ore. So i got to go mine for that, literally. EF. So now I'm in um, metals, so it looks a bit different than the last ones we were looking at. And I'm looking for iron and steel. And let's look at final products iron ore at mine. So there's um, two, let's see, extraction. I could also refine by extraction, see what I get here. Um, so I can look through all of them just to make sure, but I know that I'm looking for iron ore at mine. If I go down, saying what is considered, mining with its direct land use and transport of crude ore to the enrichment plant. So that's basically getting me from mining and then moving from the mine to the refinery. So I'm gonna click this. So now that deals with my mining, I need to add another element for my steel bottle body processing. Um, I'm actually going to change this to mining, so I really remember what it's dealing with. Cool. Okay. Again, drag and drop. Okay, look at my cheat sheet. Now I've got my refining, basically converting that iron ore into steel. Same amount, 211.92 grams. Look EF. Go back down to iron and steel. Final product. All right. So, chromium steel, just stainless. And that's probably not what I want. Transport of hot metal and other materials to converter, steel making process, and casting. So this is probably what I want because it's basically saying, um, it's converting the metal to steel and casting it into the big, what they call ingots, these big sort of blocks that then get transferred to um, the manufacturing center. So I'm gonna say yes to this guy. All right. And the last thing is my new element, and this is steel body our whoops, uh, manufacturing. 